Okay, so in this one, we're told the block shown in this figure has mass m equals 7 kg and lies on a fixed, smooth, frictionless plane tilted at an angle of theta equals 22 degrees to the horizontal. A, determine the acceleration of the block as it slides down the plane. B, if the block starts from rest 12 meters up the plane from its base, what will be the block speed when it reaches the bottom of the incline? So whenever I do problems like this, I always like to write down our given first. So what do they tell us? So we know the mass of our, we know the mass of the block, right? They tell us is 7 kg. So we know that right off the bat. And then what we're going to be solving for in these different problems are two things. One, we're going to be solving for acceleration. A, so I went A equals question mark. And then in part B, we're going to solve for the velocity of the block when it reaches the bottom of the plane. And so we know the distance, they tell us, is 12 meters from here, basically to the block where it starts up the plane. To the bottom of the plane is 12 meters. So just keep in mind, this distance is 12 meters. And then they also tell us this is 22 degrees, so the angle to the horizontal. Okay, so those are the things we know. And so let's kind of talk about, uh, well, first, actually, we need to draw the free body diagram. So that's the next step we need to do for this problem. So whenever you're dealing with like a block on a plane or anything like that, you want to do the free body diagram. So what forces do we have acting here? So we have two forces, the normal force and the force due to gravity. So we know the normal force always acts perpendicular to the plane it's on. So we know it's going to be along this y-axis here. So they went ahead and drew it right away that we have an x-y axis. So this along this way, parallel to our plane, right, this plane here, is uh, our x-axis and then perpendicular to that is the y-axis so they drew that on the thing but we have it here too so we know the normal force acts perpendicular or along this y so this is the normal force which is the force that basically acts whenever you touch something there's an opposite force to it newton's third law and so we have f sub n here and then the other force is the force due to gravity so that force actually just acts straight down so it would actually act like this it doesn't matter where the plane is so I'm just going to call it F sub G. But whenever you do a free body diagram like this, you want to label it in terms of its X and Y components. So you notice F sub N, it's already on the Y axis. So I don't need to split it up into its components. But F sub G is not along it. So I like to split it up into its X and Y components. So how do we do that? So basically, you just draw. I like to do it like this. So we know F G of X is going to act, right? Because we're labeling it relative to our, uh, our plane here, which is along this, uh, this, this side, right? So F G of X would be... Uh, parallel to it. So fg of x is here, and then fg of y would be along the y. So draw it from here. So you would call this fg of y. And so keep in mind it forms a triangle like this. This will be useful later, but just notice that I just split it into its x and y components because it's easier to solve. Okay, great. So we want to determine the acceleration of the block as it slides down the plane. And so notice it's going to slide down this way. And so what we're dealing with is when, we, when they say acceleration, they're really talking about acceleration in the x. So we're going to be finding a of x. And we notice that it's not accelerating the y because it actually doesn't move in the y at all. It only moves along this plane. So it's, it's y doesn't actually, uh, it's not changing its y. It's only moving along the x. So there's no acceleration in the y. So really, we want to just find a of x. And so how do we go about doing that? So the way we do that is, or at least my thought process, is I know f equals ma. So just starting with Newton's second law, basic. And I want to find a of x. So I know I'm going to have to find f of x. So the force in the x on, at, acting, acting on this block is equal to m times a of x. But keep in mind, when you do a free body diagram with this multiple forces, you sum the forces in the x. But uh, yeah, so we know the sum of the forces in the x equal m a x. So we got to sum of the forces in the x. But keep in mind, in this problem, there's really only one force acting on the x, which is the force due to gravity. Since f sub n acts in the y, and yeah, we have the component of f of g in the x direction. OK, so if we sum the force in the x, the only one we have here is f g of x equals m a x. So keep in mind, we're solving for a of x. And so what is f g of x? So keep in mind, this is the force of gravity in the x direction. And so how do we find that? So uh, keep in mind what gravity is. So f equals m g. So I know that this is m g. So I just need to find the x component of it, which is this right here. And so the way I like to do that is by drawing a triangle. So I'm just going to take this triangle right here and redraw it. So keep in mind, I'm going to draw it straight up like this, but it's basically this thing right here. So f of g is right here, f g of y is right here, and f g of x is along here. So all I did was take this triangle, move it here. And so I know that the way this triangle works is 
you need to know that this angle right here is the same as this angle right here. That's just how they work. And so now that we know that, right, how do we find f g of x? So the way we do that is by using trig. And so let me go over here a bit. This is 22 degrees. And so, uh, yeah, so basically we know f of g is just mg. So what we're going to do for the f g of x here is going to use sine. So we know the trig function sine is opposite this side relative to the angle over hypotenuse. So the sine of the angle, in this case it's 22, is equal to the opposite f of g over f, or sorry, opposite, sorry, my, my, my bad. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So fg of x over f of g. So if we multiply both sides by f of g, you'll see what fg of x is equal to. It's just f of g, and so we know f of g is the force of gravity. So it's just mg times the sine of 22. And so that's how you find the x component. And that's going to basically stay consistent for any incline you have. So if you want to find the x component of gravity of any incline, it's just mg times the sine of the incline, whatever the angle is. And so for cosine, or sorry, for y, you're not going to be doing that in this problem, but it's just important to know. Uh, it would just be cosine. So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And the only thing that changes here is just mg cosine of the angle equals fg of y. So just keep that in mind. It's, you're not going to need it for this problem since we're only dealing with the x. But yeah, so fg of x, we just found mg sine of 22. So mg sine of 22 equals max. So I want to solve for this. It's basically just m. They cancel on both sides. So you just have g times the sine of 22 equals a of x, since the mass is just the same on both sides. And so what you want to do is, now that you know that, you can just basically just multiply this out. So g is just acceleration due to gravity. It's a constant. 9.8 sine of 22 equals a of x. And so you'll find that this equals 3.67 meters per second squared. So 3.67 meters per second squared, that's going to be your answer to A. So we found the acceleration at which it goes down. So that's your answer to A. Now for B, what we're assuming is uh, a different thing. So let's go ahead and look at the problem real quick. So for B, it says if the block starts from rest uh, 12 meters up the plane from its base, what will, what will be the block speed when it reaches the bottom of the incline? So whenever some, they tell me something starts from rest and we're given a distance, and I have acceleration, it kind of clues back to kinematics. So we're going to use kinematics to solve this one. And so whenever I do kinematic problems, I always like to write down our given and then write down the variables we have. So keep in mind, in kinematics, you're basically dealing with five main variables, which are initial velocity, final velocity, uh, acceleration in the x, uh, time, and then change in distance. In this case, we're dealing with the x-axis since basically we're working along here. So I'm going to write delta x. And since we're dealing with kinematics, I like to write down the variables we have. So I know we start from rest. So the initial velocity in this case is going to be zero. So I like to say v sub zero equals zero meters per second. And then at the end of our interval, we're assuming is basically the end of this. So we know we're trying to solve for v. So v is what we're trying to find. We know the acceleration x, which is what we found from the last problem. So we actually needed to do that first. So 3.67 meters per second squared. Uh, the time we actually don't know. And then the distance, in the x direction, they tell us we start 12 meters up till we reach it. So the delta x is just 12. And so now what we have is uh, enough variable. We have three variables and one unknown, so we can solve. Now the equation you can use is, uh, I'm going to use this one here, which is v squared equals v sub 0 squared plus 2ax delta x. So keep in mind these are all x since we're dealing with the x. Uh, but yeah, this is the kinematic equation you should use since these are the variables you're given. So just look back at your kinematic notes uh, if you need a refresher on this. But we just need to solve for v, uh, v sub x now. So basically, you just square root all this stuff. So v sub 0 is just 0 squared, so that doesn't impact it. So it's 2 times a, 3.67 times delta x. So yeah, that's what you got here. So yeah, so if you go ahead and do that, you're going to find v sub x, or the final velocity in the x, is 9.38 meters per second. So uh, this is going to be your speed when you reach the bottom of the incline. So uh, right here, you're going to be traveling at that speed. So that's what they wanted for b. So 
This is your answer to B. Uh, this right here was your answer to A. Uh, but yeah, so these are going to be your answers for this uh, problem. And hopefully you found it useful.